Good day everyone, this is Alvin again from the Philippines and welcome to my profile review of the candidates from Miss Universe 2021. Welcome to the second episode of my review for the contestants of Miss Universe 2021. If you haven't seen the part one, it's already uploaded on my YouTube channel where we discuss the candidates from the African region. This time, we will be talking about the first half of the delegates from the European region because there's a lot of them. So I divided into two parts. So this is part two, which is group A for the European region. So let's begin because there's a lot of them in this. There's actually 12 of them that we will be talking about. So let's begin with Albania. Ina Daichi. Albania is one of those countries that I commend for selecting candidates that truly works with IMG. With the selection of Cindy Marina in 2019 and Paula Memetukai in 2020, I feel like Ina this year is another great choice. Aside from being a well photographed, stunning candidate, she is also an architect, designer, scientist, and artist based on her profile that I have read. I felt like her styling during the national pageant isn't something that I'm crazy about, but she can walk and love her smile and radiant personality when she's on stage. I sense potentials in her, and if this woman can do well in public speaking, she could be a spoiler in the semifinals. I mean, number, I mean the next candidate we have is Armenia. I know many would argue in this one that Armenia is in Asia or something like that. But again, I'm just following the European, I mean, the continental selection of Miss Universe where Armenia was placed in the European region. So Armenia's representative is Nane Avetisyan. I mean, she's in the field of law. But for someone like Nane, who is representing Armenia, who is still considered new in Miss Universe, I wish they'll give us more updates because that'll give more exposure about her, about her country, which could potentially help them to be noticed as well because honestly, I haven't seen much of her yet. Next we have Belgium, Cadiz del Tour. Belgium usually go into the first cut, but with Cadiz's selection, I feel like she has the potentials to put Belgium into the next round or a much higher spot. However, she really needs to work harder, especially when it comes to the styling, specifically during the preliminaries, because we have seen many delegates from Belgium before who gave us kind of disappointing performances in preliminaries, especially when it comes to the gown selection. So hopefully they could learn from that. It would be sad if she will be wasted because Kedis is a gem. Next we have Bulgaria. Elena Danova, she looked very young in motion and she is super stunning in photos. But I feel like she needs to give us more. And also I feel like I need to see more from her as well. And this is the challenge when it comes to country, for example, like Bulgaria, who isn't big in beauty pageants. They really need to work on promoting their candidates. Give, you, uh, give us something more so that it could really help the candidates as well. Next we have... Croatia. Ora Ivanisevic. I find her beautiful and she speaks very well too because I have watched some of her interviews thanks to Miss You Updates for conducting those interviews. I am not sure yet if she is strong enough to be in the first cut, especially if there's no regional selection, but with improvements on styling and walk, she could be up there. Next we have the Czech Republic. Karolina Kokesheva. She is extremely gorgeous and everything about her beauty screams frontrunner. She was also Miss Global 2019, which is something on her resume. I haven't heard her speak yet, but if she can nail the interviews, then Czech Republic is surely back on track. The thing about IMG is that we are not just looking for beauty anymore for someone who is facially beautiful. We are looking for a woman who can speak and who can ace the preliminaries and I am hoping that Carolina can do that. This is actually the big difference looking at the Trump era and IMG era because if candidate is beautiful most likely she will get a placement in Trump era. But for IMG that doesn't give a guarantee because you need to be 
performing in all rounds of the competition in order to get that elusive placement. Next we have Finland. As the Unkuri, stunning face. But I wanted to see is a much but I wanted to see a much stronger and better transformation for her. Her walk was quite okay, but it doesn't give me that wow factor yet. So if Finland wanted to break the very long drought, which is kind of very long actually because their last placement was in 1996 so hopefully they need to do more when it comes to preparation for Essie if they really wanted to place this year next we have France Clemens Botino one of the clear front runners for this edition I am I'm I, I mean I, I saw I saw how she completely improved in her walk and France knows how to style their candidates perfectly especially when they know that they have higher chances of doing well and I am confident that Clemence will be styled beautifully. I have seen some different stylings for her where she looks super stunning. She's giving me that Princess Tiana vibes with her beauty, energy, and personality. So I'm sensing sure placement for France this 2021. Next we have Germany. Hannah Seifer, she's German-Colombian and was hand-picked to represent Germany. I haven't seen much of her yet, except for a very few photos of hers. But based on what I have seen so far, I don't see Germany placing. However, I could be wrong, so we'll see during the competition, but it's kind of a long shot for now. Next we have Great Britain. Emma Coolingridge. This is such a pleasant choice from Great Britain, even without regional selection. Of course, we don't know yet if there will be regional selection or they will follow last year where there's no regional selection. I think Emma could still give a strong fight for a continuous placement for Great Britain. She can actually walk. I mean, I have seen and watched some of the clips of her previous competition and she's actually good on stage. Also, I find her more stunning in motion because sometimes her photos doesn't give enough justice when it comes to her beauty. I sense a strong competitor in her as well. Next we have Grace, Katerina Kobotsaki. I can't say much about her because they aren't posting much about her either. However, based on the few clips I've seen, she's very Trump era-ish of Miss Universe to me. Modelous face, great figure and beautiful face, but we'll see if she could fit into the mold of IMG. Next we have Iceland. Elisa Groa, she already have experience competing in other international pageants and it is very apparent during the national pageant because her walk was a kind of solid. Although overall, I would love to see a more elevated and stronger version of her performance because this is Miss Universe. For now, I don't see her in the top 20 if there is no regional selection, but I am not crossing her off my list yet because I can see potentials in her as well to get that placement. So we'll see how they will do during the competition. So Hi! I am so sorry. Let me just go ahead and interrupt you a little bit. Please don't forget to follow me on my Instagram account, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and also if you wanted to support my channel, you can do so through this. Okay, please don't forget. And let's go ahead and go back to the video. Bye. Now, for this batch, instead of three, I will also naming my four favorites for this group because in Africa I have named my four so let's just make it four to be fair for everybody so for this group my top four favorites in random order are France, Czech Republic, Belgium, and Great Britain. Here are my big four. Who are your favorites for this group alone? Because after this, we will be talking about the next group for the European region. So what do you think? Don't forget to leave your comments below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and share the video as well. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe because you'll be seeing more of these videos in the future. For now, thank you very much and have a wonderful day from the Philippines.